second order ordinary differential equation for a linear time invariant system. We're gonna be solving for the forced response. Free and forced response or homogeneous and particular solution for a second order ordinary differential equation for a linear time invariant system. We're gonna solve for all that with Laplace transform tables utilizing partial fraction decomposition along the way. Isn't being an engineer just awesomely horrible sometimes? So it's not gonna be that bad. And kind of the purpose of this video is just to sort of explain some terminology, free and forced response. I wanna show you that when I take a single ODE differential equation, and I do one solution for the forced response and one solution for the free response, when you add those two together, you get the general solution that incorporates both of them. The forced response accounts for the forcing function, the number on the right-hand side of the differential equation. The free response ignores the force, sets the force equal to zero, but accounts for the initial conditions. Again, and when you combine those, the general solution accounts for both. And for the Laplace transform, I'm not doing any calculus. I am only using the tables because that's the engineering way. Forced response first. Since there's no initial conditions, the forward Laplace transform is very straightforward. All of your time derivatives just become powers of s. So x double dot becomes s squared. Your x dot s, the 15x is, is no s at all. And the 30, just the regular number, is one over s. And you can see these in the Laplace transform table. I factor out my x of s term because that's how these Laplace transform problems are always gonna go. Your goal is to take your ODE and do a forward Laplace transform. On your left-hand side, you wanna isolate x of s by itself, and all of the other pieces get divided over and become the denominator on the right-hand side. Then we'll do a partial fraction expansion on the right-hand side, and then an inverse Laplace transform to get back to the time domain for the final answer. This s squared plus 8s plus 15 is sometimes called the characteristic equation, and you can learn a decent amount about the behavior of the system by analyzing this equation, but I'm gonna learn a decent amount about the system by just solving for the final answer. So let's just go straight, straight to that. So we'll divide this over to the other side. 30 divided by s, and then the s squared plus 8s plus 15, I can factor this. And if you're just doing like homework or textbook problems, you can do a quadratic equation to factor this if you want to, but you might just wanna try some, just try integers first. It's usually gonna be integers. So four times four is 16, that's not right. I'm, at, I'm figuring out factors that add up to eight. So five plus three is eight, five times three is 15. So bingo, five and three. So I can factor this now into uh, s plus three and s plus five in the denominator, which means that I'm looking at a partial fraction decomposition probably of the form c1, one over s, c2, one over s plus three, and c3, one over s plus five. And now I wanna go ahead and look towards, can I actually get these back? Like are these fractions in my Laplace transform table so that I can get to the final answer because if they're not there, then I need to fix that before I solve for the coefficients. You do not want to solve for coefficients for terms that aren't even in the table. Then you're just stuck and you have to start over. So yes, in the table, I see that a one over S term is just going to become a constant. Um, and my one over S plus A is going to become a E to the negative AT, like a, a decrease in exponential. So, okay, that's good. I know that once I solve for these coefficients, I will be able to get to a final answer. So now let me go back and actually do the partial fraction decomposition now. Partial fractions are, they, you know, you just gotta deal with it. It's just part of every problem. Every time you're doing Laplace transforms, you're gonna have to do partial fractions every time. Just get used to it. It's a little bit tedious, but you can do it. <laughs> so the goal is I want to get to this form like C1, one over S, but when you split up a fraction, like every fraction has to have the same denominator. If I wanna cancel out the denominators, when you're adding fractions, you can only add fractions with the same denominator. So my C1, one over S, I have to multiply by S plus three, S plus five in both the numerator and the denominator. 
When you multiply in both the numerator and denominator, they cancel out, so it's like multiplying by one. But what that does is it gives me the exact same denominator on the right-hand side as on the left-hand side. So my C2 term, since it already has S plus three in the denominator, I just need to multiply by S times S plus five in the numerator, and an S and S plus five in the denominator. And then same kind of thing for the C3 term. And once all of your terms have the same denominator, you can multiply by the denominator and cancel it out completely, and you're left just with the numerator. So 30 is equal to C1, and I'm gonna go ahead and, and distribute this in here, S squared plus eight S plus 15, plus C2, S squared plus five S, and C3, S squared plus three S. This looks like a problem, but it's not. There's one equation and three unknowns. We can split this up into different equations based on the powers of S. So a S squared equation, an S equation, and an S to the zeroth power equation, which is just the numbers. So the S squared, the left-hand side is zero S squared, but the right, C1, C2, and C3 all have an S squared term. The S equation, there's no S on the left. Eight C1, five C2, and three C3. And for regular numbers, there's 30 on the left, 15 C1 on the right, and that's it. So we can get C1 right off the bat, just divide the 15 over, we get C1 is equal to two. That leaves us with two equations and two unknowns, which is the perfect number for typing them into my calculator. So I, I have a TI-36S Pro, I can use the system solve where you can do a, a two by two matrix here and plug in, again, I'll, I'm gonna rewrite this in matrix form where I've plugged in the number C1 equals to two. And this gets me a coefficient C2 of negative five and a coefficient C3 equal to positive three. Since I already up above found the form of what the final answer was gonna look like, now I can just plug in these coefficients into that expression. So that gets me an expression of two minus five e to the negative three t plus three e to the negative five t. This is the forced response. We included the 30, which was the forcing function, and we ignored initial conditions, forced response. In math classes, they'll call this the particular solution. One third of the way done, your TA Indiana is waiting here patiently because he thinks maybe if you're learning something, you'd be willing to hit the thumbs up button to tell him that he's doing a good job. And I'll move ahead for this second order linear ODE with the free response, which engineers call the free response. Mathematicians are gonna call this the homogeneous solution. This is where we set the forcing function equal to zero, the right-hand side is zero, but now we account for the initial conditions. The forward Laplace transform is gonna have a couple of extra terms on the left-hand side to account for these initial conditions. The X double dot term is not only s squared times x of s, it's also minus s x of zero minus x dot of zero, right? The initial conditions for both position and velocity are both relevant. And then for the eight x dot terms, it, it's not just s x of s, you also have to account for the initial condition for position in that expression as well. Uh, the 15 x of s is still the same. But the, at least the right-hand side is zero, so at least that part's a little bit easier. Moving to the next step, I'm gonna collect all of the x of s terms on the left side. All of the terms that are not x of s get moved to the right-hand side. So all of the initial condition terms get moved to the right-hand side. 10s, four, and 80, the eight times 10 is 80. That all gets moved to the right-hand side. And then again, just always every time we take a big division step, take all the x of s terms, divide them over, and we're left with our big denominator. Uh, we factored this already last time, s plus three and s plus five. So the partial fraction decomposition is gonna go to these two fractions, the one over s plus three and the one over s plus five terms, which we already checked. They're, they're definitely in the Laplace transform table from the forced response. Got to rewrite the fractions when doing partial fraction decomposition, partial fraction expansion. You have to make sure that all of the denominators are the same before you cancel the denominators out. So the C4 term has to be multiplied by S plus five and the C5 term has to be multiplied by S plus three. By the way, you, if I were solving this by itself, I would just call these C1 and C2. I'm calling them four and five because I already used C1, C2, C3 on the, the last problem. I just wanna use different 
constants just to make sure that I'm not reusing variables, even though I'm still just calling it X. Oh well, just to double check that I'm doing the, the fractions correct, you know, if we cancel out the S plus three and S plus three, we're left with C5 over S plus five, which is that, right? That's the expression I'm looking for, C5, one over S plus five, okay. Now using the tables, these one over S plus A goes to E to the negative AT. So my final answer for this free response, right? The homogeneous solution is gonna be C4 E to the negative three T, since A is three on the first one, and then since A is five on the second one, plus C5 E to the negative five T. So cancel out my denominators. I'm just left with 10 S plus 84 on the left-hand side. And I got my C4 and C5 numerators on the right-hand side. I'm gonna separate all the terms. Again, this is gonna be something you're gonna do like a million times for every Laplace transform problem. Just separate your terms by the powers of S. So my S to the first power equation, 10 on the left, C4 plus C5 on the right. For my S to the zero equation, just the numbers, 84 on the left, 5C4, 3C5 on the right. Plug these into my calculator, right? Just a regular two equations, two unknowns, matrix problem. C4 positive 27, C5 negative 17. And that gives my final answer for the free response, the homogeneous solution of this second order linear ODE, 27E to the negative 3T minus 17E to the negative 5T, free response, homogeneous solution. And that makes us two thirds of the way done. Now we're gonna do the general solution, which is gonna include both. This is gonna be both initial conditions and the forcing function. And when we get to the very end, we're gonna add together the two answers we already found, the free response and the force response. If we solve them correctly, they should add up to the answer we're about to solve for, which is the general solution to the second order linear ODE, differential equation, partial fractions, Laplace transform, all the buzzwords, let's do it. A little bit faster this time around, the forward Laplace transform is exactly the same. The left-hand side has the S squared term with both initial conditions for position velocity. The 8x dot term has an S, X of S, and initial condition for position. Uh, so left-hand side is kind of the same as for the free response. The right-hand side, the 30 times one over S is exactly the same from the forced response. I'm gonna combine terms. So my X of S term has S squared plus eight S plus 15. Those are all of the X terms. I also have initial conditions still on the left-hand side right now, minus 10 S, minus four, minus 80. My right-hand side is 30 times one over S. Before I move my terms, my initial conditions over to the right-hand side, I wanna get rid of that one over S. Uh, fractions are to be avoided. Uh, whenever possible. And so I'm just gonna multiply everything by S just to make the equation look a little bit simpler. You don't technically have to do this step. You'll get to the same answer even if you leave the one over S over there, but it's easier for me, uh, it's easier for me to do it this way. So I recommend also, if you have a, a one over S, one over S squared term, multiply so you don't have any fractions at this point in your equation, only a numerator, there'll be plenty of fractions later on. And you already know which fractions we're gonna be doing. We've got C6, one over S, C7, one over S plus three, and C8, one over S plus five. Again, I'm doing numbers six through eight just because I already used five coefficients from previous parts of the problems, just so I'm not repeating the same coefficient values. Once we do the inverse Laplace transform, the final answer is gonna be of the form X of T is equal to C6 by itself, because one over S is just gonna to translate to a number. Then the one over S plus A is gonna be E to the negative AT. So that's your C7 E to the negative three T, C8 E to the negative five T. Now, before we actually do that inverse Laplace transform, we do technically, in order to solve these coefficients, have to rewrite all these fractions using the same denominator so that we can cancel out the denominator. So this like C6 over S needs to get multiplied by S plus three and S plus five and you can check, all right, if I cancel out the, the S plus three and S plus fives, so that leaves me with C6 over S, all right? So the C7 has S and S plus five in the numerator, and the C8 is gonna have S times S plus three in the numerator. And now all the denominators are the same, so we can cancel out all the denominators, leaves just the numerators, and then on same steps is gonna be to separate. Instead of 
one equation with three unknowns. We're gonna split this up into three different equations for three different powers of s. An s squared, an s to the first power, and s to the zeroth power. I'm gonna write out all three of my equations. The first two equations have all three terms in them, but the third equation just has 30 equals 15 C6. So we can find C6 right off the bat is gonna be two. That's kind of a good sign. We had two as one of our coefficients from previous problem. So that's good news. If I rewrite the first two equations in matrix form, plugging in this C6 of two, I'm left with C7 plus C8 equals eight and five C7, three C8 is equal to 68. Put that into my calculator, C7, 22, C8, negative 14. And in my red equation here, right, I had already figured out what the final form of the answer was gonna be. So I get a general solution to this ordinary differential equation, two plus 22e to the negative three t minus 14e to the negative five t. Again, this is the general solution or the total solution, uh, the general response. Final answer, accounting for initial conditions and the forcing function. So let's check if it actually is equal to the free and forced response added together, particular and homogeneous solutions added together. So looking at both the free response and the forced response, there's only one number term, two, so that term stays. We've got two e to the negative three t terms, a minus five and a plus 27, so that's plus 22 e to the negative three t. And for the negative 5t terms, we've got a plus 3 and a minus 17. That makes negative 14e to the negative 5t. So as expected, a good <laughs> it confirms I didn't make any math errors anywhere on here. The free response plus the forced response is equal to the final answer. Or in mathematician terms, the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution is equal to the, the general solution. Final answer for differential equations, ODEs, Laplace transforms. Uh, what else do we do? Partial fraction expansion. All right, there's no way you wanna do another video right now, more practice problems, but if you're just like in the zone and you wanna keep going, the next video on the playlist here is gonna be for steady state versus transient response. Some more terminology. This is about free versus forced. The next video is gonna be steady state versus transient part of the solution.